Is the beauty industry really dying? I hear this time and time again lately, and I wanted to know if this was really true. So I did some digging, I pulled up some consumer research, and I have all the facts in front of me, so we're gonna dive into that, and I'm also gonna let you know my opinions on why things are the way they are, and we're gonna be testing out some new makeup at the same time. So if that sounds good, stick around. If you're new here and you like unsponsored makeup reviews, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right guys, so I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a while because I feel like I keep hearing it over and over again. Everybody's saying the beauty industry is dying, beauty YouTube views are down, so people assume that nobody's buying makeup. I don't know about you, but when I go into the mall, Sephora and Ulta are literally the busiest stores. They have lines that are wrapping around, going into a different aisle, and oftentimes it's so busy I don't even want to go in there because it's just like wall to wall people, it's not like that in any of the other stores in the mall. So I have a hard time believing that people are not buying beauty products. It just doesn't make sense, at least based on what I'm observing out in the wild. I'm just gonna put on the new Kopari sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen. It has a little bit of a tint to it. It's SPF 50 and it also has vitamin C and niacinamide. And you guys, this is like the nicest formula. I've been wearing this nonstop. It is so thin, it feels like a serum. It is absolutely beautiful for a mineral sunscreen. It is unlike anything that I've tried so far. It's so thin and weightless and it goes on so beautifully under makeup too. So anyway, I wanna start with some data that I pulled up from a company called Circana. They do a ton of market research and they have the beauty results for the first quarter of 2024 and they compared it to last year. So I wanted to just show you this chart really quick. So the purple bars are prestige beauty or high-end beauty and the pink bars are mass market or drugstore. So starting with the makeup column, we see that Prestige Beauty is actually up 5% this year while Drugstore is down 5%. And I found that to be super interesting in this economy. We're definitely gonna get into that and talk about that a little bit later and I'll share why I think that is, but that was not what I was expecting to see at all. Then when it comes to skincare, Prestige skincare is up 10% and mass market skincare is up 4%. So I feel like skincare is still doing really well, but the bigger growth comes in the next two categories. So we have prestige hair care. It's at 11% growth from last year and mass market hair care grew a little bit. It's at 1%. So it's interesting that hair products are starting to do really well. And then the biggest category is fragrance. Prestige fragrance is up 13% from last year, which is huge. Mass market fragrance is down 2%. And they had also mentioned in the data that wasn't on the chart, but it says that gift sets grew by 22%, which were outpacing even the fragrances. And they're talking about travel sets and discovery sets, like the kits that you get at Sephora. So travel and mini size products are also growing at a crazy fast rate, especially when it comes to prestige brands. So I just wanna go back and start with makeup because we're seeing makeup as kind of the softest growth category Category. They only went up 5% when it comes to prestige and drugstore is down. So it would appear according to the data that people are buying less makeup and when they are buying it, they're buying high end, which like I said before, shocks me because everybody's always talking about the economy and how tough times are and you know the price of groceries and gas and everything is so expensive. Why are people gravitating toward high end? That's kind of the thing that really left me scratching my head along with why are makeup sales down in general. Um, for foundation, I'm just gonna use the Lancome Tante Idol foundation stick and this is in the shade 260 Bisque. So I'll just show you a swatch of what that looks like. It's hard to see because it blends into my skin tone really well, um, but that's what the color looks like. So one other thing that they did mention in the data is that lip products are the strongest performer hands down in the makeup category. And they said that was up 26% in Q1 from last year. And this was primarily tinted lip balms and lip oils, which are basically the hottest performing makeup product right now. And when you think about it, tinted lip balms and lip oils are one of the most low maintenance products you can get when it comes to makeup. And I think really that's the trend that we've been seeing ever since 2020. So if you think back to 2016, I know everybody's saying, I wish things would go back to 2016 when everybody was doing full glam, but it's 2024, it's not 2016, and the world has changed a lot. You know, if you think back to 
2016 when almost everybody was wearing full cover foundation. They were sculpting and contouring their faces like Kim Kardashian. They were using five or six colors of eyeshadow on their eyes using false lashes. And not only did that take skill to do, it took a long time to get your makeup done in the morning. And then 2020 hit, we all know what happened there. And a lot of people were working from home. Those who weren't had their faces covered. So makeup really wasn't as much of a thing. And when it was over and people started coming back out into the world again, I think we all kind of got used to wearing less and I'm including myself in that too. And it's not just makeup. I've noticed again, like when I go to the mall, more than half the people that I see look like they just rolled out of bed. They're wearing sweatpants, some are wearing pajama pants with slippers around the mall. Um, nobody has their hair done, very minimal makeup. And I'm not saying I don't go out in leggings or athleisure because I definitely do. So no judgment on anybody with this. But again, I remember when we first started kind of going back out again, like I lived in leggings for an entire year, year and a half. And when people started going back out, it was like, I have to put jeans on, like jeans feel so tight and so uncomfortable compared to what I was wearing. And it could be that makeup feels the same way for a lot of people, you know? They realized they could sleep in a little bit in the morning rather than getting up early to do a full face of glam makeup. So I do think that's a huge reason why things have shifted. And also I think it's just the nature of trends, right? Like if, if you think back to the 80s, those of you who were around in the 80s like I was, do you remember how everybody was contouring, not with contour powder, but they were using blush to contour. And the blush was like insane. People would put this big thick stripe. They had the blue eyeshadow, the crazy hair that took hours to do with a whole can of Aquanet, you know? The 80s were a full glam decade. And then all of a sudden the 90s hit and you saw like the CK1 ads with Kate Moss wearing no makeup. And it was an extremely low maintenance time. I remember most of the girls that I knew in high school, you'd put on some brown lipstick and mascara, and that's basically it. Maybe some smoky eyeliner, but it absolutely was a very, like I said, low maintenance decade. Then again, in the 2000s, we got back into the full glam, the contouring, the heavy eye makeup looks. We're just kind of naturally shifting back the other way. And I do think 2020 sparked it, but it was inevitably going to happen because it's human nature. If you do something too much, you eventually get tired of it, you get bored of it, and you want the opposite. And that's, I think, what's, what we're seeing here. Next for brows, I got this new brow pencil from Benefit, and this is their Precisely My Brow detailer. So it's supposed to be even tinier and skinnier than their original one. The tip is so super small and it's supposed to give really hair-like strokes. So I have it in the shade four, which is a deep brown shade. And oh my gosh, this is so cool. I think you just have to press very lightly with this because I have a feeling that this tip would break pretty easily. But anyway, that kind of brings me to the next part of the makeup category. Why is prestige up in this economy? and people aren't buying drugstore. I think there may be a couple of reasons for this as well. First off, drugstore has gotten a lot more expensive. And just on my videos alone, I see time and time again, people are saying, this is so expensive, I might as well just buy a high-end product. Like for example, the CoverGirl Essence Foundation that came out recently, it was $21. And a lot of people were like, I'm not paying that for CoverGirl, it makes no sense. Granted, it is much cheaper than the product it's trying to dupe, which is a Chanel foundation. But we're also seeing this huge trend with dupes and brands are charging more for the dupe product because they know you're gonna compare it to the original, which is so much more expensive so they can kind of raise the price a little bit because in comparison, it still seems cheap. So I think that's the first reason that Prestige Beauty is doing better. I also think that because people aren't buying as much makeup, they're buying fewer things, but going high end. So instead of just buying a whole ton of things at the drugstore, they may buy just one or two um, more prestige products instead. And also we can't discount TikTok. TikTok has made so many products go viral and a huge percentage of people who are watching TikTok are tweens, teens, and young adults. And you may remember a couple of months ago when everybody was talking about the teenagers taking over Sephora. And I've seen it myself personally. When we're in Sephora, actually um, just a couple of weeks ago, we were in there and my husband was like kind of looking around and he was like, why are there so many like 
kids in here. And I was like, I'll tell you later. And then when we got in the car, I had to tell him the whole story about the Sephora kids like videos going viral and the whole thing. And while I was standing online, there was a teenage girl in front of me and she was just picking out so many different things and filling her basket. And I couldn't help but stand there and think like when I was a teenager, when I was allowed to wear makeup, I was not getting high end. It was drugstore all the way. So times have definitely changed. I mean, a friend of mine as well has some tween girls and you know, I always have so much PR coming in and stuff like that. And I like to give it away to friends and family. And this friend, I was like, you know, do they wear makeup? And she's like, oh yeah, they love makeup. So I let them like pick stuff out of my stash and they didn't want to touch any of the drugstore makeup. And the high-end stuff that I had, they were like, oh, Charlotte Tilbury, I have this. Oh, Natasha Denona, yeah, I have this already. And it was like, they were just kind of, I don't know, like unimpressed. So it blows my mind, but parents are definitely willing these days to spend the extra money to get their kids these viral products. If you think of like the Stanley mugs, it's the same kind of thing. I saw a video on TikTok from a mom who got her daughter like a knockoff Stanley mug and her daughter was like tormented in school. And then the mom felt like she had to go back and get the more expensive mug. My son is in fourth grade and I see girls in his class that have the Stanley mugs. So I think these viral trends are driving up prestige beauty as well. For eyes today, I'm just gonna go really simple. I'm gonna be using the Big Ego Jelly Mud Shadow from ColourPop. I love this one. It's a gorgeous purple duochrome. And also piggybacking on what I was talking about before with makeup, not being as popular now. Kelly Gooch had just posted a video a couple of days ago about a teenager that went viral on TikTok because she said that eyeshadow is for old ladies. <laughs> and it was really interesting because it just goes to show you that the generation that's coming up just wants really simple makeup. And if they are wearing eyeshadows, they're wearing something like this, which is just a one and done, very easy eyeshadow look. And if I'm being completely honest, I do this like a one and done shadow much more often than I take out an eyeshadow palette these days. And that's another thing. I think we're not seeing palette releases like we used to. And when brands do release a palette, they're not getting the same hype that they once did. I think part of that is due to the fact that we're just seeing the same colors over and over again now. There are only so many color stories you can do. So many of us have a lot of different eyeshadow palettes and we're a little bit more critical, I think, when it comes to buying them because so many look like something we already have. Have. I've noticed just on my channel alone, if I try to publish an eyeshadow palette video, like a video just about this one palette, like I used to do where I do looks with it and I compare it to other things that I have, it gets probably a quarter of the views that it used to. So these days, if I wanna talk about a palette, I usually have to include it in a video with many other things. Otherwise, only a small percentage of my audience watches it. So I've definitely noticed a shift in that as well. I'm just gonna use the AOA Studio liquid liner in brown. So rather than releasing eyeshadow palettes, I've noticed brands releasing a lot of lip products, which makes sense because like the data said earlier, lip products are up like 26%, especially the tinted balms and oils. And that's really what we're seeing from a majority of the brands. Also blush, I think is still really big, really popular. And I am seeing complexion products as well, but it seems like lately, instead of more full coverage foundations, we're seeing skin tints, which is really just a tinted moisturizer. Um, tinted SPFs are also really popular, but all of these products are just very low maintenance makeup, kind of keeping in line with that trend. And then when it comes to skincare, we saw that that is also growing really fast in the prestige market, but it's also growing in mass market, even though it was just a small percentage, according to the data, they said that it was the fastest growing category in mass market right now, because makeup is down at the drugstore, um, fragrance is down at the drugstore, and hair products were just like a small increase. So skincare is just really growing fast. And according to this, they said body spray, was the top category because I guess they're including that in skincare. It's not just stuff for your face. So they said body spray was a top seller. And I think we've seen that with the Sol de Janeiro body sprays at Sephora. I think they're probably responsible for a lot of that. And in addition to that, they said that face serums were the second strongest performer again 
in the prestige brand market. So it's kind of interesting to me that body sprays were the top performer when it comes to skincare because I would personally classify those as fragrance, but we see that fragrance is the biggest growth by far. So I guess if they're putting body sprays into the skincare category, that's gonna skew the results a little bit. But also the growth of face serums totally makes sense because if you're wearing less makeup, you want your skin to look really good. And I think people are just really focused on creating that flawless canvas and then they don't have to wear as much makeup, they can feel more confident. And I know that a lot of you watching are not on TikTok, but I'm over there and I've seen skincare videos just going viral, especially when it comes to, again, the kids. There are literal 10 and 12 year olds doing full skincare routines from like Drunk Elephant, Glow Recipe, all of these high-end skincare brands. And those are the the products that are really trending to the point where these brands have actually had to come out and tell parents don't let your kids buy the retinol and the acids because they're not necessary for them at that age and they can hurt their skin's barrier. But you know, when it comes to these viral products, they want what's popular and I think that's a huge factor behind skincare growing as fast as it is. And also, like I said before, just people wanting their skin to look good so they can wear less makeup. By the way, for mascara, I'm using the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. I've really gotten back into using this again. I know that e.l.f. has their dupe for it, which I think is really, really good, their lash extender, but I love this one too. And I got this tube a while ago and I don't want it to go to waste. So I've been using it in like almost every video lately. Next up for blush, I got this one from Polite Society. I've been wanting to try this. This is their Polite Pops Powder Blush Stick. So this is supposed to be basically a cream blush with a powder finish. So it's super cute. It comes in this tiny little stick. So let me just show you the color. I got the shade London, which is just a really beautiful rosy pink. This looks gorgeous. So I'm just going to go ahead and sweep this on. Ooh, this is super weird. It literally feels like a powder in a stick. It doesn't feel like a cream at all. That is so interesting. I mean, it literally dries down right away. It doesn't feel like a cream at all. That's so cool. And I love the color as well. It's just melting into my skin so easily. So then when it comes to fragrance, which is the fastest growing category, it is so popular right now. Circana's data says that um, playing into the Gen Alpha effect, prestige fragrances among households with kids grew at twice the rate compared to households without kids, which suggests that the spending per buyer was directly influenced by the presence of children. So that's really interesting too. And again, I have seen over on TikTok, tons of kids talking about fragrance, perfume, body spray. And even here on YouTube, I get suggested a ton of fragrance review videos. So it really seems to be gaining in popularity. YouTube is definitely pushing those videos. And it's funny because if someone isn't really, really good at describing fragrance, it's almost impossible to know what it's gonna smell like. You really just have to go to the stores and try them out for yourself. And even then, if somebody is good at describing fragrance, you don't know what it's gonna smell like on you and your own unique chemistry. The other day I posted a short ranking all of the Sol de Janeiro body sprays and I was talking about number 71, how I felt like it smells like creme brulee on me. It's like got the caramelized vanilla and macadamia nut, tonka bean, and it just, it smells so good. And then other people were like, it smells like popcorn on me or buttered popcorn. And I don't get that at all on my skin. So I think it's just, it's really so heavily dependent on not only your skin chemistry, but also just how your nose perceives things. I feel like certain things often smell different to different people. So while I can maybe get some ideas from a fragrance video, I'm still going to have to go to the store and actually smell these things for myself, spray them on, walk around for a while, see how they settle. Speaking of tinted lip balms, I'm going to use the new Catrice Melt and Shine Juicy Lip Balm in the shade Malibu Barbie. I talked about these in a Catrice video a couple days ago, and these are so good. I like them, I think, even better than the Tarte ones. So the last category, hair care, is also, like I said before in the beginning of the video, it's growing really rapidly. According to their data, they said that hair product sales are growing double digits in Q1. Hair wellness continues to rise in importance. So they're seeing huge sales in hair thinning and hair loss products. Also hair oils and serums, scalp care, and heat protectants. So those all grew between 13% and 25% during the quarter. And out of those, they said that salon brands rather than drugstore brands were the top sales contributor. But interestingly, celebrity brands grew the fastest, up 64%. 
I'm having trouble even thinking of a celebrity hair care brand. You guys could probably help me out. Like I know Jennifer Aniston has her new hairline at Ulta, which is called Lola V, but I don't know. I'm blanking on other celebrity hair brands that are coming out recently. But either way, in addition to the fragrance videos, I am getting recommended a ton of hair videos too. One of the people I watch, Abby Young, I've noticed her channel just explode in popularity ever since she kind of started focusing more on hair than on makeup. And I've gotten some amazing tips from her as well. I started doing hair oiling because of her and I feel like it's really made a difference in my hair's health and it's not as brittle as it used to be. I don't have to fight it as much. So I just thought that all of this data was super interesting. It's really eye-opening actually. The article that I was reading kind of closed out by saying that we shouldn't underestimate the strength of the beauty industry as sales grew by over 600 million in Q1. So there's a lot of excitement in beauty from trending brands and new product launches to growing engagement from younger consumers. So beauty is not dying, but I do think it's shifted a little bit. So it's shifting from a focus on makeup, which it was for such a long time, to skincare, hair care, and fragrance being a little bit more popular at the moment. But like I said earlier in the video, these things are always cyclical and makeup is going to trend again at some point. It could be in a year or two, or kind of like back in the 90s when we had almost a whole decade of really bare faces. It could be a while, we don't know. Fortunately or unfortunately, we live in a world now that is so driven by trends and trends are moving at the speed of light. So I feel like it could be sooner rather than later that the younger generation is gonna start to pick up on what we were doing in 2015, 2016, and they're gonna start doing that before we know it. But at the same time too, what the younger generation is doing doesn't necessarily have to reflect on what us older generations are doing either. I feel like there are tons of you out there who still love full glam makeup. Over in my Facebook group, I see you guys all the time buying new eyeshadow palettes and things like that. So I don't feel like makeup is dead for everybody. It's just that I think the strongest beauty sales right now are coming from these younger teens and tweens over on TikTok, which in turn is driving up the numbers more. So I would love to hear from you on this topic down below. Are you tired of makeup? Do you feel yourself drifting more toward skincare and fragrance? and hair products or are you still into makeup like 100% and love doing your full glam looks every day? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to talk with all of you about this and just see what your opinions are. So I wanna take a minute just to thank all of you for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. I really appreciate it. it helps out the algorithm. Also, if you enjoyed this style of video and you'd like to see more commentary, let me know. Of course, I'm never gonna stop doing makeup reviews, but throwing in something like this every once in a while is fun too. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.